Thank you, Lord. Doesn't she look beautiful Honey, today? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I see she got a bottle of water. She must think her mouth's going to get dry. But <laughs> well, let's just raise our hands to our pastor and say, Lord, use her for your glory. Lord, use her for your glory. One more time. Lord, use her for your glory. Come on, let's bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank glory you, Lord. to God. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to God. Praise the Lord, church. Praise Ooh, the Lord. Glory to God. This is the Lord's church. Yes. And Jesus is Lord. Glory to God. Let me let me uh turn my internet on. Get get ready here. Because I gotta go to some scriptures. They were too long to write on the paper. Praise the Lord. But um I was gonna address an issue that happened last Sunday. But you know what, I'm not gonna go there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about it just a little bit because um, I had sent out a victory text to everybody, a lot of people, about my mom last Sunday. And boy, did that victory report turn into a nightmare. The people, I tell you honey, people will, uh, lift you up one day and put you down on the ground the next. And I tell you, some things were said. People called people and talked about me. Oh, because they misunderstood my text. They thought I had no faith in what my mother was saying. But they didn't read it right. And no, I didn't tell it all. But still, yet and still. You know, we, we sometimes we talk. We talk too much. We judge people too quick. Instead of calling me and finding out what happened. They'd rather call somebody else. But that's all right. God said, leave that alone because your life will speak for itself. I ain't got to try to prove nothing to nobody. God know who I am. I've been saved 30 years. And I didn't get this far on fear and doubt. I got this far by faith. So, yes, I walk in faith. I walk by faith and not by sight. So my word today that the Lord gave me was consider your ways. Consider your ways. God wants us to consider our ways. Not nobody else's ways, but your own ways. We're always so quick to judge, like I just said. A lot of people is guilty of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, and it ain't just from taking communion. Paul said in 2 Corinthians, let a man examine himself whether he be of the faith. Prove your own self to God. Don't worry about nobody else's salvation unless you're there to pick them up. Okay? To pick them up. That's the only thing. Unless you're there to help them. Not to tear them down. Glory to God. Because I'm living this life to live again. I'm running that I may obtain, and I'm pressing towards the mark for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. So I, like Paul, I train my body. I discipline my body, and I bring this body under to make it obey the word of God and obey God. Glory to God. Least by any means when I preach to others. I myself should be a castaway, rejected, thrown away. I'm not playing church, God. I'm not playing church, church. I'm living to live again. And King Solomon wrote in Proverbs, he said, There is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end, my God, thereof, are the ways of death. And he of all people should know. He said there's a way that seemeth right. It seems right. If, if you're not sure. And you have any question about it. Go to the Lord in prayer. Don't just do it anyway. But ask the Lord. Is this your will? Is this your way? Because the end of what you're contemplating may lead to death. And you don't even know it. King Solomon
Solomon was instructed, he was warned what would happen. His, his father, King David, was on his sickbed, on his deathbed, and he told him, be strong, therefore, and show yourself a man. King Solomon was only a child when he began to reign as king. But his father was telling him, I know you're young, but you must grow up. It's time to grow up now. It's time to put away childish things. No more acting like a child. No more speaking like a child. Now you have become king. You must act like a king. You must speak like a king. And I'm going to tell you how to do it. Isn't that something? His father said, I'm going to tell you how to do it. Can you imagine, though, Solomon being so young? Yesterday, he was playing outside, digging in the dirt with sticks with his friends. But today, he must be a ruler of the kingdom. Glory to God. I know Solomon was scared. I know he was frightened. Glory to God. He knew his dad had a lot of responsibilities. And that was no job for a child. He knew he had big shoes to fill, and he knew his feet was too little to fill them. Glory to God. Too little to fit in my daddy's shoes. But David said, don't worry. I'm going to tell you what to do. The first thing he said was be strong and show yourself a man, not the boy that you are. And here's the most important thing. He said, keep the demand, keep the charge, keep the commandment of the Lord. Glory to God. To walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies as it is written in the laws of Moses that thou mayest prosper in all thy ways that thou doest Whither servant thou turneth thyself, that the Lord may continue his word which he spoke concerning me. This is David. He said, the Lord spoke a word concerning me about my children. So he's telling Solomon to do this so it'll be fulfilled. He said, continue in the word which he spoke concerning me. Saying, if thy children, this is the promise that God told David. If your children take heed to their way. In other words, he's saying, consider your ways. If they consider their ways to walk before me in truth, with all their heart, with all their soul, there shall not fail thee a man on the throne of Israel. What he's saying is if they obey everything the Lord has told them, there will always be a king from the lineage of David. He won't allow another king to come in and take over. He won't allow another king to be ruler over the children of Israel, his chosen people. But all you have to do is be obedient. Serve me. Be obedient to the commandment. Yeah. And the Lord appeared unto Solomon in a dream after he became king. And let's read that in 1 Kings chapter 3. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to read verses 1 through 15. And Solomon made affinity with Pharaoh, king of Egypt. That means he made friends with him. He developed a relationship with Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her into the city of David until he had made an end of building his own house in the house of the Lord, and the walls of Jerusalem round about. Meaning Pharaoh had gave him his daughter to, to wed. He married Pharaoh's daughter. Only the people sacrificed in high places, because there was no house built unto the name of the Lord until those days. And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statues of David his father. Only he sacrificed and burnt incense 
in the high place. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there. For that was the great high place. A thousand burnt incense did Solomon offer unto the Lord at the altar. And Gibeon, the Lord appeared unto Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, ask what I shall give thee. Can you imagine that? The Lord coming to you and saying, ask what you will. Ask me what you want of me. And Solomon said, thou hast shown unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy. According as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of the heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go in and go out. I don't know the rules of being a king, what to do, what not to do. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen a great people and cannot be numbered nor counted for multitudes. Meaning here I am in the midst of all these people. There were so many children of Israel. It said that there was a, a, like the sand of the sea. Multitudes. You can't count the sand that's on the seashore, on the beach. You can't count that. This is all you can do and try. That's how many children of Israel there was. And he said, now you done put me in the midst of it. Here I am. What am I to do? Said Solomon. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people. That I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this, thy so great a people, God? Glory to God. In the speech, please God. You hear that? The speech, please God. That Solomon had asked this thing. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast thou asked riches for thyself, yeah. nor hast thou asked the life of thine enemies, but hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. And see right there where he said, you, not, you have not asked. This hair is tickling my nose. You have not asked for uh, your enemies. Because when David, I didn't put that in, but when David was telling him before he came king, he was telling them his enemies. And do this. When you, when you become king, he said, get this one and kill that one and do this. That's what David was telling Solomon. But the Lord said, because you have not asked for that, nor have you asked for riches, yes. but you have asked, for understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy words, and lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart. Glory to God. So that there was none like thee before, and neither after thee shall there any arise unto thee. Solomon was the wisest man there was. Glory to God. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, Jesus. so that there shall not be any among the king like unto thee all thy days. You hear that? He gave it to him. You don't even have to ask. The Bible says if a man ways please him, he'll give him the desires of his heart. And Solomon, he wasn't even concerned about that. He was just worried, like I would have been, scared, nervous. Lord, what do I do? How do I rule a people? And I'm just a little child. And if thou wilt walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments as thy father David did walk, then will I lengthen thy days. Not only is he going to make them rich, but he said he's going to lengthen his day, let him live a long time, yes. live a long life. Yes. And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord and offered burnt offerings and offered peace offerings yes. and made a feast to all his servants. 
Solomon was celebrating what the Lord had just revealed unto him. For the Bible said all Israel had feared Solomon because they saw that he had the wisdom of God to judge God's people. People would come from all over just to sit under the talkings and the teachings of Solomon. It blew their mind the wisdom that Solomon had, that the Lord had gave him. Now listen, the Bible says, and Solomon reigned over all the kingdoms from the river Euphrates unto the land of the Philistines and unto the borders of Egypt. Okay. They brought gifts to Solomon. They served Solomon all the days of his life. The Egyptians who had once had the children of Israel as slaves, now they were serving the king of the children of Israel. Pharaoh in his army. They did the children of Israel so bad. They was in bondage for 400 years. Now Pharaoh is serving Israel. God's children's king. In the beginning of chapter 3 and 1, it says Solomon took a liking because friends, he took a liking and he became friends with King Pharaoh. They became so close that Pharaoh gave him his daughter to marry. Proverbs 16 and 17 says, when a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. There ain't nothing, nothing like having peace with your enemy. Paul said in Romans 12, 17 to 21, never repay evil for evil. Take thought for what is right and gracious and prosper in the sight of everyone. That means do right. Do what's right. He's telling you, consider your ways. Yes. He said, if it be possible on your part, yes. do all that you can to live in peace with all men, with every man, with all kinds, not just your kind of people, yes. your race of people, but he said, with everybody. Then he said, beloved, avenge not yourselves, Amen. but rather give that to God. Yep. For it is written, vengeance is mine, yeah. saith the Lord. And I will repay. I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, he said, feed him. If your enemy is thirsty, give him something to drink. For it's like putting burning coals of shame on their heads. Be not overcome with evil, but overcome that evil with good. And that's what King Solomon did. He befriended the enemies of Israel, yes. the Philistines and the Egyptians. And they all lived in peace all the days of Solomon's reign. But when it came to the women, Lord have mercy, Solomon in all his wisdom could not, would not close the door to the love that he had for them strange women. Strange women, the Bible called. And God warned him over in 1 Kings. God had warned him. Let's read that. 1 Kings 9. Hallelujah. God had warned him. I'm going to read the Amplified Version. Verses 1 through 9. 1 Kings. Chapter 9. Verse 1. Now it happened when Solomon had finished building the house of the Lord and the king's house and all else which he was pleased to do that the Lord appeared unto Solomon a second time. Okay. The first time was the dream. Okay. Now he's visiting him again. Just as he had appeared unto him at Gibeon. And the Lord said unto him, I have heard your prayer and supplication, which you have made before me. I have consecrated this house which you have built by putting my name and my presence there forever. My eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. As for you, because he heard about Solomon, as for you, live your life 
before me as David your father walked, in integrity of heart, in uprightness, in acting in accordance with everything that I have commanded you, and will keep my statutes and my precepts. Then will I establish the throne of your kingdom over Israel forever, just as I promised your father David, saying, you shall not be without a man descendant on the throne of Israel. But if you or your sons turn away from following me and do not keep my commandments and my statutes, which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them, then will I cut off Israel from the land which I have given them. And I will cast out of my sight the house which I have consecrated for my name and my presence. Then Israel will become a proverb and a byword among all the people. This house will become a heap of ruins. Everyone who passes by will applaud, appall, and sneer and say, Why has the Lord done such a thing to this land? into this house and they will say because they abandoned the Lord their God and brought their fathers out of the land of Egypt and have chosen other gods and have worshiped and served them that is the reason the Lord has brought out them all the adversity glory to God so the Lord was warning him he was warning him but King Solomon didn't li listen you would have think King Solomon would have repented and cried unto the Lord to deliver him. Yeah. And you read where he even gave advice and warnings about these same women, these same strange women that he was with. Because he the one who wrote Proverbs and is in Proverbs. But he didn't take his own advice. So let us read over there in 1 Kings Chapter 11, verse 1 through 13. 1 King, chapter 11. Now Solomon loved many foreign women, among which the daughters of Pharaoh, the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Edomites. Lord, I didn't think I was going to read all this. I don't know all these names. The Scythians, the Hittite women, from every nation of whom the Lord said to the Israel, listen, you shall not associate with them, nor shall they associate with you. But Solomon was in love with every one of them. For the results will be that they will turn your heart to follow their God. Yet Solomon clung to them in love. He had 700 wives princesses, 300 concubines, and wives, and these wives turned his heart from God. For when Solomon was old, his wives turned his heart away to other gods, and his heart was not completely devoted to the Lord his God, and was the heart, and was as was the heart of his father David. For Solomon went after honey help me out this God the fertility God that's whatever the name was God forgive me and after Malcon Milcon the horror of the Amalekites, Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and did not follow the Lord fully as his father David had done then Solomon built a high place he had learned to build high places for all these uh Gods, these people that they worship their gods. And I'm going to jump down to verse 8. And he did the same for all his foreign wives who burned incense and sacrificed to their gods. So the Lord became angry with Solomon because his heart was turned away from the Lord. And the God of Israel had appeared to him twice and had commanded him concerning these things that he should not follow other gods, but he did not observe what the Lord had said. Now see that this one on jump. Hold on. He did. He did not observe 
what the Lord has said. I done messed up at this. I'm going to get back to the sheet of paper here. But listen, we are no match for the devil. Do y'all hear me? If Solomon, in all his wisdom, he pleased God in the beginning. Okay? His heart was right, in the right place in the beginning. But like my husband said, it's not how you start. Honey, it matters how you finish. And don't you know in the end, Solomon was lost. He wrote about all these things. There is a way that seemeth right. That was Solomon. Wow. That seemeth right unto men. But he just couldn't quit. He couldn't quit. He longed for them women. That spirit was on him. That spirit of lust. And the Bible said he liked it. Every one of them, the nations. Each different nation, woman he was in love with. But we are no match for the devil. He had got caught up with all that is in the world. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. And that is not of the Father, the Bible says. Some of y'all need to give the devil back his tools. Amen. Give him back his toys. Give him back his books. Glory to God. Whatever it is, give it back. Yeah. Give it back and tell that devil, I'm not playing with you no more. Tell him you're not playing with him. Don't say today. Well, see, he'll come back tomorrow thinking you meant just today. But you tell him, no, I'm not playing with you no more. Today, tomorrow, or any day. Put him in his place. Put him in his place. Tell him, look, I'm saved. I gave my heart to the Lord. I'm ready to live right. I'm ready to surrender all to God. Glory to God. Make it plain to him. Make it plain. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Tell him you're running for your life. Yes. And stay out of the bars. Stay out of the clubs. Stay away from friends having these parties where you know they're going to be drinking. You know they're going to be smoking. Stay off the enemy's territory. When the children of Israel um, went to battle, they didn't go on the enemy's territory unless God told them. He told them, go and take the land. They didn't move beforehand. They didn't go beforehand. They sought the Lord on every war. They didn't move until God say move. Glory to God. And when God said move, he said, I'm going to be with you. And you're going to take the land. Yeah. And not none going to be lost. And honey, that's what God did. He was sending the, the children of Israel in there and not none would be lost. I don't care if, the, if there was more than the children of Israel. Could have been more than. But see, God was with them. He was on their side. And the Bible said, can a man take fire into his bosom and not be burned? Kenny? All right. So that's, so that's that's what I'm saying. Stay out of the bar. Stay away from that that looks evil. The very appearance of evil. Stay away from it. He said, don't let your good be spoken evil of. Because, honey, the minute you put that fire in your bosom, not only will your clothes be burned, but you will too. So, yes. So the answer is no. Can a man hold fire in the bosom of him and not be burned? Yeah, he'll be burned. Every time he do it, he's going to be burned. So God said, acknowledge him in all your ways. Not just the days when you feel like living right. But in all your ways, acknowledge him. When you feel like this flesh is coming alive, itching, burning, yearning, acknowledge him. God, help me. This flesh is wanting to do the wrong thing. Help me, God. Keep my eyes on you. Keep me focused. Glory to God. Acknowledge him. And he said, I will direct your path. He is more than able to keep you from falling. To keep your feet from stumbling. We got to trust him, y'all. Trust him. Hallelujah. But we have to make a decision. We got to make a decision. It's time to make a decision. Make up in your mind. For God I live. And for God, I'm going to die. Time out for doing things your way. It's time to do it God's way. Because it's God's way or the highway. It's God's way or it's no way. Do you want a one-way ticket to heaven? Yeah. Or do you want a round trip to hell? Because that's where you're going. You're going to be down there running around. That's that round trip ticket. Running around trying to find the exit out of there. Torment. 
trying to get away from the flame, from the torment, looking, finding, trying to find the exit, and finding that there is none. There's no way out, no way out of hell. Glory to God. And what a way to find out that your round ticket was just a one-way ticket to hell after all. Isn't that something? See, the enemy tried to trick you. He tried to say it's a, a round trip ticket. Now, you knew it sounded too good to be true. Let me tell you something. If it sounds too good to be true, you better know that there's a catch-22 somewhere. Yes, sir. Somewhere in there, there's a catch-22. So you better start reading the fine print. Read that first, as a matter of fact. Then start from the top. Because that round trip ticket was nothing but a one-way ticket to him. Now David said, Behold, thou desireth truth in the inward part. And in the hidden parts, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. David knew about that old hidden part. Because David got caught up in his own sin. When God sent the prophet Nathan to warn David, he didn't even realize that he was talking about himself. He told him everything he had done in a parable, but he just didn't mention David's name. And when Nathan was done telling him the parable, David was so mad. And he said, as surely as the Lord liveth, he vowed any man who would do such a thing deserves death. Can you believe it? He said, well, David, you the man. I'm talking about you. You the man. Glory to God. And David said to Nathan, I have sinned against God. He repented. He cried out. His eyes was open. He said, I, I have sinned against God. And God said, I have anointed you king over Israel and delivered you out of the hand of Saul. Saul was after David so much he was scared. Ran and hid in caves and stuff. He was scared of Saul. I don't blame him because he was young and Saul was trying to kill him every chance he got. And David ran for his life. Do you hear me? And God said, I have delivered you from the hands of Saul and have gave you his house and his wife. Jesus. And I gave you the house of Israel and of Judah. And if thou, and if that wasn't enough, I would have given you even much, much more. So why then have you despised the word of the Lord by doing evil in my sight? Did you not think that I seen you? Did you not know that I seen you, David? You have killed Uriah with the sword and turned around and took the man's wife. And because you did this in secret, he said, I am about to do to you openly for all Israel to see. My God. Then David realized, God said, if you did it unto the least of me. Because see, Uriah was, I guess, poor. And David, that's what he's trying to uh, reference right here. David was the king, had everything. He had no business taking that man's wife. You had during 700 wives and concubines and all that. Yeah. But no, there he go, going to steal this man's wife. Yes, and the Lord said, uh, because you've done this in secret, oh, honey, I'm about to whoop you openly in front of everybody. Yes. Glory to God. And then David realized, when God said, if you've done it to the least of them, then you've done it unto me. It wasn't that he done it to Uriah or to his family. But you sinned against God. When we become born again, we sin against God. It's not about the people, what you did, who you did it to, but you did it unto God. When you're not saved, then you're sinning unto yourself. That don't matter. But when you come into the knowledge of the truth, and you know better, then you're sinning against God. You're sinning against God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. The Bible says, for it is impossible for those who were enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and was made partakers of the Holy Ghost. That means shared with the Holy Ghost. 
and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. If they should fall away, if they should backslide, if they should go back to renew them again unto repentance. Seeing they have crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. You y'all understand that? What I just read. Listen. He said, you can't say that the Jews killed him. You can't say that the soldiers killed him. You wasn't there. I wasn't a part of it. Not you yourself. No, not then. But now, now that you have come into the knowledge of God, it's like you are putting the nails in his hands. You are putting the thorns on his head. You're piercing his side. It's you. It's not the, the Jews. It's not the soldiers, but it's you this time. It is you. Doing it all over again, the Bible says. Afresh, all over again. Putting him through an open shame. Praise you, Jesus. God desires truth in the inward part. But you have to desire it too. And that's what David did. He lost a lot. God told him, and that baby from the man's wife that you took shall surely die. The baby says, surely die. You're going to be playing house in my face with sin. But that baby going to die. And the Bible said, and God took him. And God told him that the baby would die. And just as sure as there's 24 hours in the day, that baby fell sick. And David prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord answered him now. And he fasted. And the Bible said he fell on the ground and he lay right there. When the elders, they tried to pick him up, try to get him in, to come in and eat, so David wouldn't go. He laid there. He cried. He fasted. But the Lord didn't answer him. Then the child died after seven days. And David heard the servants over there whispering. So he turned up to them and he said, is the baby dead? And they said, yes, the baby dead. So you know what he did? He got up. The Bible said David got up. He washed his face. He anointed himself and he changed his clothes. And he went into the house of the Lord and he worshiped God. And after he worshiped God, he went home and the Bible said he ate. And his servant asked him, why when the baby was alive, you fasted and cried? Meaning like you could have spent time with him. Why didn't you come spend time with him? But you stayed there. You fasted and you cried. But now that the baby is, is dead, he said, you're going to come and eat. And he said, as long as the child was alive, I fasted and I cried, hoping the Lord would have mercy on me, yes. that he would show grace unto me. Yes. Yes. But now that the baby is dead, there's no need for me to fast. There's no need for me to cry. Because yeah. I can't bring him back. I can't bring him back. But one day, he said, I'll see him again. I will see him again. And the Bible said that David was a man after God's own heart. You know why? Because he realized that he had sinned against God. And he knew that God was angry and could have killed him. But this was his wake-up call. And he repented and he sinned no more. He considered his ways, and he served God with all his heart all the days of his life. So I ask you, consider your ways. Consider your lifestyle, the way you're living. Is it pleasing unto God, or is your lifestyle bringing shame at the mention of your name? Glory to God. Consider your ways. Consider your ways. And that's my message for today. Glory to God. Praise to God. Consider your ways. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Let's stand on our feet. Praise the Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You're worthy, you're worthy, God. Praise you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Consider your ways. Thank you, Minister. Solomon, in all his wisdom. 
He just took a time out and considered his ways. He just considered his ways. I told I tell Frederick a lot of times, I said, before you do something, I said, think about it. Think about the consequences. When you say something, think about it. Is it going to hurt me? Is it going to help me? Is it going to hurt somebody else? Is it going to help somebody else? Vice versa. Amen. But it's just part of life. And a lot of times before we make big decisions or we do things that um, we know biblically we shouldn't do, we have to take a time out and consider how detrimental it could be to our, to our life, to the life of other people. So I'm just wondering. And I don't do this a lot, but I'm just wondering if somebody says, I want to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Somebody would say, I want to consider my ways today because the way I've been living, the way that seemeth right unto me, was not right at all. I'm just wondering. The altar is open. Knowing that we all have to one day, we have to make that decision. And before we close our eyes, we want to know that we have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And that if we were to close our eyes for the last time, that when they were opened up, they wouldn't be opened up in hell. That they'd be opened up in heaven. Amen. Young people, old people. It doesn't matter. We all have to make that decision. Anybody here? I'm not going to twist your arm and beg you to do it. But just realize it's something that we all must do. We all must accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The Bible says that except a man is born again, he cannot see, cannot see the kingdom of heaven. No one? Okay, we'll leave it at that. We're just going to uh, close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you today. We thank you for the word. We thank you for our pastor, God. God, as we go about our life, our daily life, during the week, months, years to come, Father, help us to have that wisdom that Solomon had, the right wisdom, Father, to make the right choices, that we would consider all our ways and actions whether or not they line up with you, Father, and your word and your will for our life, for everything we want to do and say and in this life, God, we want it to be pleasing to you. Let us not take grace for granted. Let us not take your unmerited favor for granted. For we know you're a loving and forgiving God. But, Father, we, want to play, we don't want to play on your mercies and your goodness. God, we thank and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. At this time, we're going to have some food in the back. You know how I'm is. Honey, we got a membership. You know we got to have some food. <laughs> Seems like every time we turn around, there's food. I don't know. I said, honey, there's too much food going on. We got food.